Good afternoon. Today we're joined by Alex Cottier, Director of External Relations for Action Against Hunger, a global humanitarian organization. Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So, or you celebrate people following on their dreams. Um, your line of work, I liken to that of an entrepreneur. It's something that's innate. So where did this desire to help the most vulnerable come from, do you think? Yeah, you know, I wish I could say that it came from a sense of charity or responsibility mm -hmm. or even pity, but, but truthfully, I've been doing what I love to do, which is essentially connecting through people. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a very nomadic childhood. I bounced around quite a lot. Yeah. Um, didn't really know what I wanted to get involved in. And by virtue of having lived and traveled to so many different countries, mm -hmm. um, I connected at the human level. And, and, and really, the field of, of humanitarian work and international development mm -hmm. just sort of made sense. Okay. Um, so it's been a, a real treat for me. Yeah. Now, you have experience both academically and real life in international relations. Did what you've learned in the library prepare you for work on the ground in the humanitarian sector? Well, I, I, I'd be lying if I said that I spent all my time at, at the library yeah. in, in, in college and, and grad school. But yeah. uh, it certainly did help in terms of knowing the theory, yeah. understanding the concepts. And the field of, of humanitarian work and, and sort of international development is so complex that you know, it's important to have the basis, um, mm -hmm. but really nothing prepares you for yeah. uh, how to mobilize in times of an earthquake yeah. or uh, times of conflict or emergency. So I think it wasn't until I actually sat in the field and, and really sort of hit yeah. the ground running that I understood how to actually implement programs and, exactly. and get things going. Yeah. So I'd say yes in a way. But Now, I know from my own studies in international relations that you have the will to help and you might even have the finance ready to go, but you know, the architecture of many African states and indeed much of the developing world hinders the aid actually getting to the place where it's needed. And also some aid can be tied, meaning that you're indebted to the creditor. So, mm. you know, it, it doesn't really even have an impact. Can you explain how you're going through some of the obstacles? Sure, and I think you raise an excellent point. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people want to help and they do help, but they feel somewhat skeptic in terms of how well this this aid is actually getting on the ground. Yeah. Uh, what I can tell you is it's very important to make sure that whether you're supporting through a financial contribution or actually physically helping tangibly on the ground, you want to work with an organization or an outfit that's actually been there for a while, has the reputation both vis-a-vis -vis the governments and the international community, but I would argue more importantly vis-a-vis -vis the beneficiaries and the people that are the ones who are ultimately being helped. Um, yeah. So I'm very pleased to say that for, for the past decade I've worked with um, organizations that have had this level of credibility and notoriety. Most recently, of course, the organization I work for, which is Action Against Hunger. Of course. Do you want to elaborate a bit on Action Against Hunger? And I'd, tell be, us I'd be happy to. So Action Against Hunger is a global humanitarian organization, as you mentioned. We've been around for the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. Started in France in uh, 1979, with uh, Afghanistan being the first mission. Okay. Since then, we've very much grown. Uh, currently, our staff on the ground um, amounts to about 6,000 people, mm -hmm. most of whom are nationals from mm -hmm. the country of, of, of involvement, wherever that may be. We're, as I said, in 45 countries, most of which happen to be in, uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa and okay. South Asia. Um, we work really, our, our name says it all. We have a mandate to try to put an end to, to world hunger. Yeah. But we do it through a very holistic approach, really underlying the importance of tackling world hunger through a very multi-dimensional approach, okay. uh, not just looking at nutrition, but also the other facets of which is uh, water, sanitation, and hygiene, mm -hmm. extremely important, especially in times like what we're going through in Nepal, yeah. which I'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. Also food security, livelihoods, and of course, emergency response. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say all in all, it's, uh, it's an approach which works. Um, we can put an end to world hunger, yeah. um, but we have to make sure we get everyone else on of board. Course. Now, the concept between Oryu Village this week is to provide a platform for people to share their work and their experiences that are making positive impacts on society. But it's really, really important that we address that there's negative things happening every single day. And of course, we're all aware of the Nepal crisis. Can you tell us a little bit about the situation on the ground there? Sure. Well, I've had the, the pleasure of actually being in Nepal. I've, I've, it's been an honor to, to travel and, mm -hmm. and to communicate with the wonderful people of Nepal. And I am incredibly saddened by what I've seen in the news, both, of course, in terms of the effects of the immediacy of the earthquake, of but really in terms of the need right now, which is, I think, why 
uh, working for an organization like Action Against Hunger is incredibly important um, because the truth is we've been in Nepal since 2005, so for over a decade. Um, and it's important to recognize this because in any emergency context, I've seen it in Haiti where of I was course. on the ground 48 hours after the earthquake, yeah. you have a surge of actors, groups, uh, and by actors I mean I mean, obviously not just people in the entertainment industry, but I mean uh, individuals, uh, groups in the humanitarian sector, foundations who all want to help. Yeah. Um, and it gets a little bit sort of um, messy in a way because everyone wants to do everything. Um, so it's important to work for an organization that knows how to uh, galvanize the right resources, mobilize everything, yeah. and then implement programs in a sensible way. So in Nepal, we've been there for, as I said, about a decade, mm -hmm. uh, providing life-saving emergency support, um, obviously now, but before we were also running mm. uh, nutritional programs. Um, and of course, for, for Nepal, you know, it was an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have have the you know the architecture yeah. in place to, to act straight away? Yeah, thanks. It's a great question. We, as I said, by virtue of being on the ground for a while, it was only a matter of scaling up rather than starting from scratch. Okay. So we were there. Uh, Nepal is a very interesting concept because the truth is, it's it's a very precarious situation because mm -hmm. you're dealing with a very urban earthquake, okay. which has sort of struck very close to Kathmandu, and you're dealing with a population which, uh, last I heard, about 30% of which was comprised of children under the age of 18. So it makes oh our work extremely important because it's really about rebuilding the country thereafter. Yeah. Um, so we were focusing on continuing our nutrition work, but also very much emphasizing the need for water, sanitation, hygiene, as well as psychosocial therapy and help and support, because mm -hmm. the truth is, uh, whether or not families have been directly affected, um, people have had a lot to deal with over the last uh, few days and yeah. few weeks. So. Now, just touching on what you said about uh, organization and how you know you have so many different teams that doing, doing different things, um, or you celebrate diversity, do you think that you know, the success of the future and how we get things done lies in the fact that we all have different missions, different talents, we're all here for something, mm -hmm. for something different, and we can all bring something different to the table. Sure. Do you think that we need to, we need to embrace diversity going forward? I think you, you hit the nail on the head. I think this idea of everyone having something to bring to the table is yeah. incredibly important. I don't say that just metaphorically because of the table and the nutrition work, yeah. but I think that something I've learned over the last decade in this field of, of humanitarian work is that we all have to look at it through a business model, essentially. Yeah. We oftentimes tend to separate business and, and nonprofit NGO yeah. work. The truth is, if you focus on, on comparative advantage, mm -hmm. meaning everyone doing what he or she or their best at doing, that's the only way forward. So I yeah. think that ultimately it's about recognizing that there are certain groups that are better at things than others mm -hmm. and putting resources accordingly so that they can continue to focus and all together we can hope to have a very strong coordination mechanism, yeah. mm -hmm. not just in Nepal, not just in the Philippines after the cycle, but thereafter really making sure that we have all the right resources in yeah. place. And this profit and non-profit model leads nicely into my next question. I'm very fascinated by the relationship between economy and society. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, we, can't we need economic growth, but it can't be at a cost to any, yeah. any other part of society. So how do you think we can facilitate this going forward to create a more sustainable way of living? I think it's an extremely interesting time we live in in this field of, of work. Um, it yeah. used to be that companies used to just write a check through their corporate social responsibility platform mm -hmm. and sort of wash their hands and that's it. They did yeah. good and moved on. Now we're seeing a real opportunity for companies, for the private sector, to really get involved at the programmatic level. So it's more than just fundraising and getting financial support to the field, but it's also how do we leverage the private sector? How do we leverage economic influences and ideas mm -hmm. and concepts to really go down to the field level and really think about how to innovate exactly. and how to get better at what we're doing. So I'm very fortunate to work in a space that I can embrace this, but I can also just connect the dots and making sure that exactly. we get the right people and the right concepts in place. Exactly. And finally, Alex, um, you know, we're all inspired by different people. I would say that the nature of your work, you're, you're inspired by just what you see every day. Um, would you say that, that going forward, that I just want to. You couldn't agree more. I, I think that um, there's never a dull moment in this field, and, mm -hmm. and every context is different. And we have to approach each situation and each environment uh, knowing that it will be fundamentally different than the previous one. And yeah. so I think for me, it's extremely important. And it's also interesting because it keeps me motivated. There's not a single individual that is alike the, the, the one that I met before. And the same applies to the, the context in which we work of in. Course. So, Alex Collier, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.